Good morning. As discussed, <coughs> I will post this uh, short video about local government <coughs> because we didn't get to discuss it in class, although I posted extensive materials on Canvas which you should consult and obviously using the overview as a study guide. So let's talk about local government. We, we discussed that much that each state functions as a unitary state, right? Each you know, region of the US functions as a unitary state, meaning that all power is given to the state government, right? There's no division of powers as in a federal system. All powers in, is in the hands of the state government, which then can decide to loan this power away, to grant it away, to delegate some of this power to local, uh, lower levels of government. And this is local government. This is why it's not in the Constitution, right? The Constitution doesn't say anything about local government, which means that it leaves it, and doesn't assign it to the federal government, which means that it leaves it in the hands of the state government. And hence the, the conundrum, hence the first question, right? What is the basis of the, of the power, whatever it is, uh, of the uh, local government, where does it come from, how should we, uh, you know, deal with the relationship between local government and state government. And two, uh, two theories have developed, or two approaches rather, have developed, and this is the, uh, you know, the conundrum with all state and local government, if you take the course, all state and local government courses have the conundrum that, well, there are 50 states. And, and uh, they have leeway in as much as how they deal with different things. We, we saw that state government, uh, you know, uh, legislatures can be arranged differently and so on. The same here. But basically, basically there are two approaches. And let's, uh, let's discuss them briefly. Uh, one approach is uh, Dylan's rule. And Dylan's rule is, is the uh, approach by which the local government is a creation of state government. Of course, many of them pre pre, uh, you know, precede state government, as for example in Washington, uh, you know, municipalities here uh, were formed before the state was formed. But the principle is because of the, each state is a unitary, is organized on a unitary basis, um, local governments then, according to Dylan's rule, are creations of the state government, which means that what does it mean in, in, in concretely? Well, the local government units <coughs> in general function on the basis of uh, certain, uh, you know, documents. Usually, for example, a municipality would have a charter, right? And these charters are given by the state government. That, that is the confirmation, the uh, foundation of their existence, right? So according to Dylan's rule, these charters are then given by the state government to the local government unit. And in this charter, the state government, state... Uh, uh, you know, the executive, legislative branch, whatever, specifically tells that municipality or that county what it is, what it can do. So this is, you know, I'm delegating specific powers to you. This is why it's a unitary uh, function. So these charters are then the foundations of the local government that are emitted by the state government. Then the other approach is home rule or Cooley's rule. And this is the idea that 1871. This is the idea that local governments know they should be self-governing, uh, in the sense that the local governments uh, should have the right to design their own charters, so self-establish themselves um, by designing their own charters, yeah, being able to amend their own charters. You know, so they, uh, the ability to establish themselves. However, of course, it's still within a quote-unquote unitary state. Um, so this charter would have, uh, you know, the, the state government would have the right of veto over these uh, charters. So it can check these charters that it conform, for example, with the constitution of the state. So Ellensburg designs its own charter, has the power to amend it, so it, it creates itself, but, you know, it is acknowledged, uh, recognized by the state government still, and the state government can veto certain aspects if they cross the basic law of the state, of this state, which is, you know, the constitution of Washington. So these are the two major theories, I think they're pretty straightforward, and there's some materials on that on campus. Uh, just, uh, we talked about bureaucracy, uh, it's, an, it's worth noting that, uh, you know, people usually criticize the federal bureaucracy, oh it's just big and bloated, and 
Well, they're about, we talked about the fact that there are about 3 million people working for the federal bureaucracy, 4 million people in the United States, or thereabouts, uh, working in state government, yeah? 10 million, however, work in local government, okay? So 10 million bureaucrats, so to speak, work actually for the local government. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of, of local government, just a few main types. Uh, first of all, the county. We're going to start, right? Um, the county is, think of it as, well, by the way, it's one of the oldest forms of local government. In uh, different states, it's called different, different regions, it's called different. Parish, for example, in Louisiana, or borough uh, in New England, and so on. But, you know, it still means county. Either it's called parish in or whatever, Mississippi. So each state has counties, varied number, varied size, varied population. What it is, is an administrative subdivision of the state. So its main role is to carry out state programs and to provide certain services, but it's a subdivision of the state. So here's the state, it's divided into counties. Right? Then the counties each have their own government, Washington and each of them, uh, you know, has an administrative role, mostly to, to, to actually uh, implement state policies. Um, how is it governed? Always important. Uh, it's governed by a, a county commission, meaning that it's governed by several people called commissioners. Uh, one of your colleagues works for uh, the commissioner for this county. So a county commission governs the county, uh, the county commission is elected, you can also have a county sheriff, a county attorney, chief county executives, and so on. Okay, so government by county commission, and the commissioners are the individual uh, members. Good, the next uh, type of uh, local government is the municipality. This is again one, a very common one, it is a crucial unit of, of local government. Uh, again, as I said, based on the charter, uh, its authority in the last uh, 100 years has, has increased. What does it do? Uh, several things. So, first of all, it delivers services to its population, meaning police, meaning uh, water, meaning sewage, meaning firefight, everything. So, the, the daily needs, right? You have Ellensburg police, right? And then water, sewage, uh, and then firefight, and so on. Right? So one is deliver services, two, it itself executes state policy. Right? So state policies are implemented by municipalities as well. Third, it can also have a direct relationship with the federal government through some, some of those grants in aid. Some of those grants in aid actually might bypass the state government in a way, being directly offered to cities. You know, there might be a federal government program, grant in aid, to uh, you know, rejuvenate uh, the, the urban downtown, inner urban uh, areas, well, that is given to, to cities, right? So how is it uh, governed? So there are several types of governance for municipalities. So let's close here the, the county issue. The municipality has several types of, of government. Okay? One type is the um, mayor plus council. So that's one mayor plus council. This is very often encountered, right? Think of the mayor as the executive, head of the executive, remember the executive is a branch, not a person. Uh, and the council is the legislature. They're both elected, right? Um, so there are two versions here. One with the weak mayor plus strong council, and obviously the other one is strong mayor plus weak council. And actually the weak mayor strong council is actually the most used Council usually is strong, but not, for example, in the case of uh, Chicago, where the mayor traditionally has been very strong with the weak council, but also politics plays a role here. So you, you see, their relationship is not definitely not based on separation of powers. You know, the mayor sits in the council in, in Chicago and so on. Uh, so um, in the first, uh, with the with the weak, with the, you know, with the um, weak mayor, strong council. Uh, here, policy making is done by the council. So the council makes policy, the mayor implements, right? This is why it is weaker. Who makes the rules? The council. 
a strong mayor because we counsel, obviously, the mayor is the chief policy maker and the council uh, works with him, right? Uh, clearly, here the mayor would also have veto power, here less so, right? This is who makes the rules, right? That's who has power. Weak mayor will not make the rule, the council will make the rule, probably not have veto power either. Just execute, you know, as an uh, executive, the, the rules. A strong mayor probably be initiating policy, have veto power over the council, and the council, you know, weaker in, in relation to him. Okay, first uh, variation. Second type of government uh, organization at the level of municipality is the commission system. So the commission system, uh, it's interesting because in the commission system, both executive function and legislative function are in one unit, the commission. Uh, the commission is formed of commissioners, right? So let's say this city of whatever it is, uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, has one, two, three, whatever, uh, commissioners, right? They're both legislators and members in the cabinet, so to speak, right? Um, so think of this uh, as both council and cabinet, as both legislature and cabinet, right? So each commissioner is both, this is both a legislature, so they're both elected as members of the legislature, but they're also chief heads, right, of a department. Right? Think of it like the cabinet, the U.S. cabinet, with the heads of each of these departments, agriculture and whatever. Think of it, if that would also be the legislature of the U.S., you would elect the members of the cabinet, right, as members of legislature, and each of them, you would elect them, and each of them would then become also heads of the various uh, departments of the administration. That's what's, what goes on in a commission model. It's an interesting thing um, because it combines both the legislative, you know, they, they make the rules and then also implement them, right? And the executive functions. The uh, model is less used, and, and one of the problems is that it lacks a clear leadership, right? As, as you have it in the other model. Okay, the other, uh, a third version of organizing. Um, government at the uh, municipality level is the city manager. That's an interesting one. Uh, it's actually very popular, um, not my favorite. The executive branch, so the branch that runs the services, right, the daily services, uh, implements, so to speak, rules and policy, is actually led by a city manager. So there is a council and there is then a uh, the executive branch led by a manager. Which means, why is it here a manager? Because he's hired. So he's not elected. He's basically a guy or a gal uh, hired by the council to run the services. And for that, you need a master's in public administration. This is why they're popular. This is what this department offers them, right? Uh, because this is you know what you need. So the council then hires and fires. The local council, the legislature, the local council, or let's say plus local council, plus council, okay? City manager plus council. We'll hire this guy, you know, um, there's a job announcement, people apply, and they're hired. Problem here is what, right? Well, exactly, I think you can guess that, well, the good thing is that this is a professional, uh, right, who knows how to run services, that's who knows how to run administration, that's his job. On the other hand, he doesn't have any political clout. These people in the, by the way, at all levels of government, right? You have, you know, the government is, you know, elected. The county commissioners are elected. Um, and, and so on. In the, in the other types of you know, municipality government. They're elected on party, not always, but mostly on party tickets, right? Uh, which means that, it doesn't have to be that way, it depends, uh, but which means that this is political. And it's political even if it's from the same party, right? Chicago has always been dominated by the Democratic Party, DC the same. But they're, you know, within the fact that all, we're, they're all Democratic, uh, part of the Democratic Party, they're huge, uh, you know, cliques and huge uh, 
differences between different candidates, different factions, and so on. So you know, again, just just like in the time of uh, uh, you know the, the first period of the U.S. party system, you might have had one party, but actually it was for all intents and purposes divided into two parties fighting each other. So the same goes, you know, they're always political in the sense that they're different interests uh, fighting each other. Now, the manager, uh, you know, in order to govern, in order to govern, to, 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 to be able to decide, you have to be part of this uh, political game, right? To be able to uh, make coalitions, right? To be able to persuade and, and coerce people to uh, do what you want. That a manager can't do because he's simply hired or fired by the council. Okay, so the point is that uh, no matter the, the type of uh, arrangement, the executive branch, so to speak, of the, the level of the municipality is a, is a you know a very important place, um, a very important function. Uh, it does everything from you know again the very important things of running a city, meaning running the services, providing these services to the to the um, people, managing the finances of the city, but also developing the city, and that's also key, right? So which parts become, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, commercial areas, right? I'm rezoning this area, so uh, from, from a place where people can only build houses, it becomes a place with malls and so on. So these are very important decisions that affect the life of generations, of generations and can very much disturb these, uh, these uh, sad lives. And, you know, again, given the example of Chicago, <coughs> you know, some of these very powerful mayors have developed the city but also have created destruction because some neighborhoods were wiped out. You know, or think of the process of, I don't know if you're familiar with it, gentrification, which is a more, you know, is a, the, the idea of bringing in middle class people in an area, usually from public with lower class, in terms of economic status, uh, people, um, and that's very controversial, right? Because it brings development, but also once it becomes gentrified, it becomes middle class. Those lower income people can't live there anymore because the rents go up, and so on and so on. Okay, uh, a third a type that I don't want you to necessarily, uh, you know, spend much time on, but it's good for you to know just as. as for future you know, reference and for your own knowledge, it are the towns and townships. I don't want to spend time on this because it's it's just you know it's just an introductory uh, thing. Uh, you know I want you to know about these levels and for some you know for most of them to actually know all everything that I just told you. Um, but towns and townships are actually this. It's a very confusing category. Come. It's not one category as a problem because you have towns, you have townships, and they mean different things in different regions of the country, right? Town usually means what? Uh, uh, it means a unit smaller than a municipality, right? So I think it's smaller than I'm not even sure. Um, but anyway, smaller than a municipality. So it's a town, but not a city, right? But township is not the same thing. Townships are sort of a, in between a municipality and a county. Are more, you know, are both things. It contains both urban and rural things. So townships are basically, you know, units of like almost like counties. They have urban and rural. Right? Towns are small units of of governments. Right? Again, this is why I'm not going to ask you to, to spend time on this, but I understand that, that there is such a term. So that's what I'm saying. In mid the Midwest, the township is a subdivision of counties. Right? So here's a very deep. This county might have three townships. This is Madison County and three townships. And then uh, towns, as I said, uh, are usually understood to be smaller than a municipality. In the New England, however, uh, town means, means both. Town is both a municipality and a county. So this is why, let's just leave it aside. How, uh, in Washington used to have townships until um, the 70s. Okay, know that they exist and they're different things. However, now let's go to other types of districts. And this is what's interesting about local government. And gov because it gives you a glimpse into what government really is. What is government? Right? Government is a unit that has rulemaking power over, and here's the question, over what? Right? Because clearly there's a territory, the 
that falls with it. But then, if you have several units of government in the same territory, what differentiates them, right? Uh, in the same territory, right? Think of the federal system, right? We have a federal government and then there are state governments. Together, they cover the same territory. What makes them different? Well, obviously, we talked about this and you really have to understand that the federal government has specific areas over which it is supposed to have power and not over the others. Only those that are enumerated. Well, is it true? No, not anymore. Because what? Implied powers? Because, because what? Commerce clause, right? Because of the, the changes in the, federal, federalist, in the federal system of the United States, which has led to the federal government having the Department of Education. But where in the enumerated listed powers given to Congress in Article 1, where do you see education? Wasn't, and in the 10th Amendment, it says that all powers not specifically given to Congress and specifically banned to states should belong to the states. That would include the education. So, but we talked about how this has changed. And it's not a, only an American specific you know, phenomenon. Yeah? Governments have increased in size, we talked about the presidency and so on. But what I'm saying is that what differentiates the federal and the state government is that they have, basically they run the same uh, uh, area, territory, right, together, all the states versus federal government, but different aspects of your life. In other words, different what? Areas of policy. Right? And that's the deal with these other forms of local uh, government. And for example, school districts. So, as the name says it, these are local units of government that govern a specific issue, education. education. And they don't correspond with municipality, they don't correspond with the county, they are, their territory might or might not overlap with those, I mean they overlap with those, but might, not, might not correspond, they're smaller than a county, contain several municipalities, the point is, here's county, county X, right, you have municipalities here, whatever, then here's a school district, right? That's what it is, right? And wh what's differentiating between that is that it governs one aspect of your life, which is education, right? So these are units of government dealing with one specific area of policy. Um, sometimes they, they are put under the local government. Say you have Washington, D.C., there is a, a, a board of education which falls under local government. But often they're completely distinct, and that's what I'm talking about. So school districts might be completely independent of all the other forms of local government, which means that they have their own governance. Usually our school boards, which is sort of the legislature, and there is a school superintendent usually, which is basically the head of the executive. Yeah? So the school boards, uh, are the legislature that you elect, while the superintendent is the guy they or gal that they hire to run, just like in the city manager council uh, model. Okay, so that's a that's a typical uh, uh, model, and so on. Well, just the same are other special districts, and in on Canvas I put them into a posted document with all the types of local units of government that the state of Washington has. And you see school districts, you see how many types of special districts there are. And these are local units of government. Special districts, again, are special because they deal with specific area of policy, i.e. specific issue. Uh, make rules and govern a specific thing. And this can be, for example, a district for the water supply, a district for the waste disposal. Because the waste disposal will, you know, the needs of waste disposing and, and where can you, you can take them only in one place, which means that all the garbage has to be collected from all this area and they all put their resources together to use and build this facility here and that's governed by a special board and that's a waste disposal, you know, district, right? Because it governs a specific thing and its borders do not match with a specific municipality or maybe town, township, county and so on. Uh, okay, usually these special districts then deal with one area, they're led by a board, just like the school board, and that's the legislature, and they have a professional administrator who is not elected, just like a superintendent, is hired by the 
board. He's the head of the, he's the guy who runs the, the thing. The guy who runs the thing. Okay, and finally, finally, let's talk about uh, another interesting uh, type of unit, metropolitan government. And metropolitan governments came about, again, because the needs of uh, making rules for certain aspects do not match with the existing borders of other local units of government. So usually metropolitan, as the name indicates, uh, have to do with, uh, they're formed around large cities or big cities, let's say Washington DC, right? Uh, Washington DC has this, what is it, a pentagon, hexagon, something like that, uh, the form, right? It's, it's in between, doesn't matter, it's in between, no, it's a diamond, it's a diamond. So it's a diamond, that's Washington DC, proper, right? Small area in between Virginia and Maryland, okay? Well, obviously, you know, the people who come here to work, and, uh, you know, there are only about 300,000 people living in Washington DC proper, but there are millions who come here to work from where? From all this area, the suburbs, so to speak. Right, and there, then you have towns here, or other municipalities and different counties. So it's a, it's a hodgepodge in different states here. Right? The problem, the but, how do you get in? Well, not everybody drives, and actually there's a pretty good metro system in Washington, D.C. But that metro system has to take them to D.C. and carry them home in all these different states. The same line starts in Maryland, goes through D.C., and ends in Virginia. Then, these people come in, make noise and garbage, and then leave, right? Well, you know, and the District of Columbia is supposed to pay for all this? Uh, how? And why? And, and how does he, well, how could it collect? Should it collect these funds to pay for these from the, the residents who don't, you know, and not from the millions who actually make this noise and garbage and misery, whatever? That's the conundrum. The conundrum is that you have a, a living area, right? A living space that is broader than, uh, you know, the, the, the existing borders. So this is why metropolitan governments are formed. To deal with these issues that, that, that cross borders, and a metro subway system is a typical example, right? Uh, or sanitation is another example. So such metropolitan governments are formed to, to cover, to bypass these uh, bo existing borders and govern those things that, that are shared, you know, by virtue of how these people live. So the metro system crosses all these borders, none of these units can govern it, so then there will be a metropolitan government type government for the metro system or whatever, right? or sanitation and so on. Okay, good. And uh, so let's talk about uh, a few words about elections. Local elections. Just like with the state government, I asked you to be able to list for me types of uh, positions you would vote for if you get, uh, get into the voting booth uh, in you know state, all the types of state in the, list, the level of state government, executive, and legislature. At local level, well, within the, on the same day, you might all also be asked to vote for local government. But you see, there's not one local government. So you will be elected, you will be asked to elect a county commissioner. Yeah, for your county. You will be asked to elect the, your city council. If you are headed if it has a mayor, you will might elect you might elect a mayor. You might elect your I don't know, a school district board. You might also be asked to elect your, you know, water board, you know, water district board, and so on. So for all these, because you live here, you live here, which might be in, you know, Ellensburg, whatever, right? And that's Ellensburg. But then you also live in the county of Kiridas, right? And you also live within, well, I don't know, this school district here. And you also might be living within this water district, and so on. And on each of these, right, you fall, each of these, you know, their area of jurisdiction overlaps. You fall, you're part of these different 
entities, uh, and each of them has a different level of government. So each of the government forms for each of these uh, types of local government uh, are elected, right? Except if they're hired, as I mentioned, you should, you should be able to list what you could be asked to vote for. So that's about it. Um, I hope uh, you will be able to use this, and I will see you at exam time. Thank you.